morning and thank you sir for that kind introduction and i would like to compliment the efforts of the ai and icai committee and interestingly that is also a very matching name ai and icai it was meant to be and uh, thank you for all the efforts and for creating the awareness and for giving us this platform without wasting further time i would like to for all the participants thank you for attending and i would like to just start with one simple problem statement the problem statement is you are handed over a tally data which is uh, raw data and it is messed up in so many ways that you uh, up apna you hold your head and you are tense what do you do then how do you make your analysis how do you do ledger scrutiny how do you do an analysis of the entire tally data keeping in mind that 30 different accountants might be sending you 30 different forms of tally data so with that problem statement here is my solution using and leveraging ai i hope the screen is now visible to everyone and pretty much clear yes my use case is for retrieving data from tally for tax audit using power query now i'm sure a lot of you who must be very well versed with power query would already know how it is used or you must have heard of the terms odbc this just takes it one step ahead and makes your life easier what is our problem statement we have raw data coming in from different sources I have leveraged Power Query to provide tax audit insights. Clients usually have non-standard data in tally. Extracting standard reports becomes an issue. You want to analyze whether TDS has been deducted on each and every voucher, but each and every tally data has different TDS named ledgers. Now the solution comes through Power Query along with the VBA approach. Ready reports for checking TDS and GST compliances, for example, Clause 44 report. Ready reports for preparing MIS, which can add value to your clients. You don't have to just Uh, position yourself as an accountant you have to position yourself as a valued business partner purely excel based comfortable for users how we approach the problem one we install a custom tdl in tally this tdl is completely in house we have prepared using chat gpt one we use our power query excel retrieval utility prepared in house we retrieve the data from tally it can be uh, as voluminous as it possible as i'll show you in the example there were approximately 13000 vouchers in the tally data that we are going to be seeing the use case against now this is the interesting step uh, for each client uh, one part, one person might write tds payable under section 194j other might write gst import other might write gst input claimable all of that can be standardized i'll as i'll show you press a simple button run a vb analysis and your report is obtained before i delve into the use case what kind of reports can be obtained this is a report which we have been able to make in power bi using the raw data a cash flow analysis of how the purchase has happened each month so for example we could tell the client that in august right you have purchased massive amounts of goods or fixed assets etc what was the reason where did the cash flow come from similarly we made another power bi chart for the client the third type of efficiency in use is this kind of dashboard where we can uh, reconcile what is coming in the books versus what is coming in the to be without further ado for the period first april 2020 i'm sorry uh, i'm sure now you can see the screen here we have a dummy data in tally for the period first april 2023 to 31st march 2024 it's quite voluminous transactions are pretty high massive amount of ledgers unstandardized data how do you standardize this and conduct the audit in 30 minutes that is our that is our prime objective step 1 we have the tally data open we will open our utility in our utility we have places to import the ledger data from tally we have place to import the voucher data from tally let's start doing that i have already done it just to save time in this session we left click it press refresh and all the data all the ledgers including their parent group and their primary group along with their closing value has been retrieved this part is not the magic i'm talking about this you've already seen happening through odbc which you use the real magic happens over here this is a voucher wise extract from tally using our tdl for each and every voucher and which all debit and credit entries it is hitting along with date reference date which parent group which primary group and using a little bit of vba etc we have also been able to check for each voucher which vendor name is hitting by checking which voucher has which sundry creditor which debtor 
how much is the TDS in each voucher, how much is the GST in each voucher, how much is the total expense in each voucher. Now how do we tell this Excel file which is the TDS ledger and which is the GST ledger. Let's see that. There is a place called input tables where from this ledger I can see that this client has these all TDS ledgers. TDS 194 view, TDS on rent. So this can be changed with each and every iteration or different client that you have. I paste the ledger names here. I paste the GST names here. I paste the primary expense names here. And then I just go to analysis and I press this button and my entire analysis is ready. This is the step for retrieving the data. Let's see how many rows it has been able to analyze and how quickly it has been able to analyze. There were 604 ledgers and there were 12,195 vouchers. Now, how does this help you? There was a lot of technical jargon here, but we need to see how it helps you. This is voucher wise analysis of each ledger, each voucher type in it, TDS in it, GST in it, and the total voucher amount hitting uh, the particular vouchers. Let's first start with the first use case. How do you check whether TDS has been deducted on each and every voucher line item? Here are certain ledgers which we see. Here is the voucher number of that ledger. Here is the voucher type. Here is the vendor name. The vendor name is retrieved from each voucher using the VBA code which I have written. Basis, ki consa sundry debtor and consa sundry creditor is being posted in that voucher. Using that, we can retrieve the vendor name. This is the TDS. This is the voucher amount. Now, in a voucher, there can be a possibility that there are multiple expense ledgers. So we check how much is the total expense in that ledger and how much is the total TDS in that voucher. And by running a simple pivot table calculation, we're able to see that in the entire ledger, TDS has been deducted on total expense at 2%, 2%, 2%. However, there is anomaly. Why is 1.9.7% uh, deducted here? This can be a query to the client. So this entire exercise of you going into the tally, pressing uh, or control, alt F8, control A, columnar view, exporting, all that comes uh, becomes a slightly automated process. Take the second example in TDS analysis. Here we have contract service expenses being gone. How much is the TDS in each? We can see in this particular voucher, I'll just color it properly. In this particular voucher, we can see that the TDS is zero. And we know that the total amount is 1916. So we can probably ignore it stating that it was below the threshold limit, hence TDS was not deducted. Now, not just for direct expense, I can change the groups over here. These are all the primary groups as per tally. I can change the months over here and I can analyze each and every one. I can use conditional formatting to check where all it's 0%. Each and every ledger, for example, let's take professional fees, professional charges. I can check which all professional charges have been debited, for example. I can check 10% here, 10% here, 10% here, and I can easily point out to the client that why is 9.33% TDS deducted on this particular voucher. So the entire process for analyzing TDS for your tax audit purpose, even for your statutory audit purpose becomes completely streamlined. Your ledger scrutiny reduces to hardly five minutes if you're able to get comfortable with this tool. Use case one, use case two. All of this, which I'm showing you in, in probably the next sheet has been derived from the same data. I have just modified the pivot table in a way for better presentation so as to solve your use case. Sale analysis. I've been able to retrieve all the sale data and check what is the GST on each sale voucher. Now I can check 18% GST has been charged on each and every sale voucher except maybe some particular ones. If there is uh, if there is no deviation, I can easily communicate and tell to the client that GST is all okay, please go ahead. For example, this voucher, I can see that this is a sale voucher which has been posted for 7 lakhs 74 thousand but the GST on it is zero. Okay. So this can be questioned to the client. I'll quickly cycle through the other reports. Very interesting use case clause 44. I want to analyze in my fixed assets. Sorry Vishnu sir how much time left? Uh, uh, you have two minutes Vishnu, sir, how much time? Uh, more. You have two minutes more and uh, it's a humble request. Uh, one use case for one panelist is okay for us. So please, you can spend more time on your one use case. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll just spend time quickly on uh, two small use cases, which I feel are very pertinent and relevant for tax audit. It is a simple problem that I feel. I want to check for clause 44 reporting out of all my fixed assets, how many vouchers have had GST charged on them and how many vouchers don't have GST charged on them. So by simple modification of the pivot table and by selecting fixed assets, I can check that GST has been charged on all the computer accessories that I have purchased. 
However, in the computer's ledger, there is a particular voucher amounting to 125,000 rupees on which no GST has been claimed by the taxpayer, which means that for my clause 44 report, now I can segregate it into two parts, expenses on which GST charge and expenses on which GST has not been charged. So this can be modified and changed for even direct expenses. If I want to filter out only those vouchers in direct expenses, I can easily find out that approximately 6,65,000 in this ledger does not have any GST claimed on it. Similarly, for indirect expenses, I know that these ledgers do not have any GST. So your clause 44 reporting can get streamlined. This was the first use case. The second I would like to analyze is for the MIS expense report, which using this expenses, I have been able, we've been able to summarize MIS expenses. Let's take a simple example for a rent ledger. What this does is using the data for every month, because it has the voucher wise data, we can analyze that for a particular rent office ledger out of the total expense, what percentage is hitting each month. So for rent office, I'm, Last pretty, 30 seconds. I'm pretty okay with a 7% amount being hit every month. So I know that the posting has taken place properly. However, 18% of the total expenses hit in March, which means the accountant might have missed to account for the expenses in April to February and has accounted for all the same in uh, March. So this is a heat map view using conditional formatting and I can see wherever it is red, I can easily speak to the client and ask him why is there a spike in expenses in this particular period. For example, in legal expenses, I can quickly ask the client, why have you paid some legal expenses in the month of July and why were they not recurring? So to summarize, one raw data properly summarized can be used to extract reports in any format that you deem fit, which can help with your analysis all with the help of chat GPT code and completely easy, comfortable to use tools.